King Zar doesn't listen to us. Hmm, sort of. We wanted a way to update our character model. We got that. We wanted a name change option. We got that. We wanted the graphics to be updated. We got that. We wanted more stuff to do on the game. We sort of got that. We wanted to not have to rely on Shade Engine to speed up pet training. We got that. We wanted a way for pet hatching to be more accessible. We got that. We wanted that potion vendor in the Arcanum to be closer to the door. We got that. We wanted AoEs to be faster, we got that. We wanted Dragoon farming to be less cancerous, well, we sort of got that now that Dragoon has become obsolete from the new Wallery spells. We wanted Decathlon decks to be PvP banned, we got that. We wanted Solar Surge and Minions to be revamped, we sort of got that because it got PvP banned instead. We wanted the process of housing decoration to be easier instead of carpet glitching, so we got that. When Kingsar tried to remove the housing sets, there was a huge backlash as we wanted them to keep it in the game, so we got that. So why do we continue to say that Kingsar doesn't listen? Because the one major complaint that we all have voiced year after year is the permanent removal of the paywall. Because they all baited us by their free-to-play marketing model which has continued for over 15 years. Yes, it is technically free-to-play, but it is also a free trial. We have all wanted them to reword it to a free trial but they continue to keep its predatory wording because it worked with their false advertising. Even this video that promotes the best free-to-play MMO games got baited by this predatory label. We have Wizard 101. Wizard 101 is a unique free-to-play card collecting MMORPG. If you like card games or if you want to try something that's different, this free-to-play title could be a nice relaxing game for you to jump into next. Next up we have Dungeons & Dragons. So what did King's Hour do? Their solution is to continue baiting players by edging them with free Wizard City and Crocotopia or the occasional free first arc for a limited time. Although, will Kingsale ever make those permanently free? No, because MGI or Gamigo have a joint ownership with Kingsale. So, Kingsale doesn't actually have control to listen to the community regarding the paywall because, hypothetically, if Wizard101 was entirely free to begin with, from the first arc all the way to the fourth arc, then once Gamigo gets their hand on Wizard101, they would have made all of the worlds to include a paywall anyways. This would have shut Wizard101 down. Just just like how all of the other games they got their grubby hands on significantly killed their games. But why wasn't this the case for Wizard 101? Because Kingsar already had the paywall. They did their job for them, which is why we haven't seen Wizard 101 shut down because there was already a predatory model to begin with. So if Kingsar can't listen to us in that regard, then what can they listen to? These are some examples of how Kingsar hasn't listened to the community. We wanted the PD system from Novus to be revamped. That did happen, but instead of requiring one school-specific masterpiece, they reiterated to require nine masterpieces of any school and still a ridiculous amount of polygons and pixels. So while the devs say that they do iterate, as a design process, we're constantly iterating on things. This PD system still remains the worst in the game. In 2022, PvP Cosmetics was removed from the game. From what was teased, it was instead being replaced with this knight's nice looking armor which many were disappointed by. It cannot compare with the design of the previous one and we all stated that it did not live to our standard. I personally hate the gear and one of the devs even asked me what I think about it and I was honest. I will not be spending any time trying to get these outfits. I personally think they are a waste of time. And although they will be a flex, it's just not worth it to have. It's ugly. Sorry to whoever designed them. So while the devs say they reiterate designs, it continues to seem like this is not the case. As a result, many players have no incentive to PvP. The reason why back in the day low level PvP was booming was because it was easy to get the robe. We would make a new character, grind it up to commander and get the robe. The reason why 2v2s were booming was because they would let their partner of a higher level carry the fight so that the lower level could get the robe. Or if both were the same level, then they would mutually benefit by trying to reach the same goal of trying to get the robe. So why do we not see that anymore? Because you removed the major incentive to PvP. The only good looking cosmetic now is the wand. The others are scepters of tributes because you could not be bothered to design a cosmetic for the free to purchase alternatives of these gear, which now have been replaced by raid gear. So having these alternative options is actually useless now. They don't serve any purpose to PvP because in the lower level leagues, people just level scale down from a max level to join the league with their 
170 gear. So Kingzell or a community manager, if you are watching this video, listen to the community by designing a better cosmetic and bringing back low level PvP. Because to design a cosmetic without bringing back low level PvP would not fix your issue of why PvP is dying. They go hand in hand. And I haven't even touched on the gamuts and rochambos, but I'm not going to be mentioning those in the video because you already know that they have been problematic. When Amothplex leaked the Wallery House from this bundle, everyone complained how empty and underwhelming a bundle house could look like. So my question is how can you release this when the majority were dissatisfied? You say you reiterate designs, but was this the case? No. Wallery is a fantastically beautiful world and it really did confuse me why the Billabong Resort was not the bundle house. It also includes mega snack pads, gardening seeds, equipment sets, and absurd pit prices where all of them need to be permanently cheaper. They are not valued while they should be valued, and whether or not you can change it is up to MGI, but a lot of your profit comes from packs and elixirs because they are somewhat affordable. They are under a thousand crowns, which is why people buy them. So why are you not making your other items affordable? Perhaps it is a tactic of comparing what is worth buying in the crown shop. However, we can already argue that packs are not worth buying, so we can discount that statement. On the same topic of crowns and bundles, many players have voiced that they wanted more crown sales. So Kingsale, we are willing to spend money on this game. Not only that, but on Christmas, during the 12 days event, a lot of people complained that they wanted bundle sales. Were these concerns listened to? No. After challenge mode was introduced to Wizard101, the Hall of Heroes gear can only be found in challenge mode. This was a terrible decision as this gear has now become obsolete. The only people that do have it are those that farmed it when this challenge mode requirement was not introduced. But why are more people not complaining about this? Because we moved on to farming Novus or Valeru gear, which again, the Novus pity system is still cancerous and for Valeru, it has been improved by a badge system, but the Nightmare Dungeon continues to be a struggle to find a team. Those that team up don't know how to navigate the maze, and even if you teach them, they get hit by a broken dream. Kingsale did modify standard mode, however, they did not fix the problem, the broken dreams. We all told them to reduce the hitbox radius so that we can hug the walls or for more to be stationary, so that our knowledge of the maze is actually useful and based on skill. But did they listen? No. Instead, they only removed some broken dreams from long pathways. On February 16th, Fairy Queens hosted a content creator roundtable, or people have worded it as a yap session. This rewording is valid because the WizTubers offered complaints instead of solutions. However, time and time again we have seen that regardless of offering solutions, Kingsell comes up with their own. It is also not our job to offer solutions as Kingsell should be in touch enough with the community to understand what we want, but many times, it seems like their solutions are always a band-aid fix. We all can list many other problems that Kingsell has not fixed or has not yet reiterated, which is why the community says Kingsell does not listen. And yes, of course they cannot fix all of our concerns, but they do have community managers for a reason. And that is to find out what people are suggesting aka complaining about. What they should do is to share a list of these complaints that they have noted down so that the community feels heard. To show that you actually are in touch by doing your research and being transparent. Not everyone watches your KO lives, okay? Probably less than 5% of the Wizard 1 on Playbase actually tunes into the streams. This means we need a documented announcement either through Twitter or dev notes that list our feedback and whether or not this feedback will be implemented. You need to be honest if you're not going to fix something and if changes are going to be made then let us know what the plan is so that we can tell you if it needs to be reiterated. If you agree with any of what I said don't forget to like the video and share it around if you think it resonated with any of your friends.